I guess some guy was try, trying to cross the border with loaded firearms. Loaded firearms, snacks, and weed, right? So they're like, exactly weighing it out. They're like, listen, we're going to let you go, blah, say, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now about to witness the journey that is Life Choices Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Life Choices Podcast. This week, I'm inviting Peter Varjabedian. Yes, sir. It was close? It was perfect. You okay, got it. perfect. And, and Peter, um, I found out through a friend of mine that you own a store downtown on Clematis Street, West Palm Beach. Yes, sir. And the name of that store is? Pete's Pop. And what is that exactly? What kind of a... Uh, Pete's Pop is... A specialty st- uh, snack store where we sell imported snacks and sodas from around the world. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And what got you into that? Oh, man, everyone asks this question. It's always funny. When I worked in Massachusetts, I worked in the uh, cannabis industry. So when I was up there, one of my uh, weekly clients, he actually had a soda from Thailand and a bag of chips from Japan that he had given me. And uh, after I tried them, I wanted to buy some more from him the following week. And when I found out uh, that it was $50 for a bag of chips and a soda, I thought I was in the wrong business. So uh, I just kind of started putting things together. And out of nowhere, I started selling out of my car, going to Canada once a week to get snacks. And uh, during COVID, I just wanted to switch up life a little bit. And I opened up a brick and mortar in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. So Okay, so the first one was in Rhode Island. Yes, sir. Very little 500 square foot store right next to a convenience store on um, Benefit Street in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. That's so, hilarious. So I've yeah. spent a great deal of time in Newport, Rhode Island. Okay, okay. Yeah, on the what, bo- on way the nicer boats. that way. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, no, uh, it started off good for me. And then uh, during COVID, not a lot of stores were open and things like that. And I was considered a convenience store via license. And I got to stay open. Uh, yeah, oh, kind of. bonus. Yeah, okay. bonus for sure. For so sure. where in Canada were you uh, heading over the border? Um, So, so funny you say that. So when I first started, I was looking for people all over the world, literally just to buy some snacks from. So I started on Facebook Marketplace and I'd go from maybe Brazil or Japan or China or UK and I would DM people who uh, were selling candy or selling soda and things like that and uh, struck out about a hundred times. <laughs> then I met someone in Toronto, Canada. His name was Brent and he was selling backwoods from Canada so uh, I agreed to buy some backwoods off him and then I, after buying the woods from him I told him what I was starting up for a business and he offered some help and started getting me snacks so awesome um, at first I made the first couple trips to him and then he'd start coming to America as well too and then when we got comfortable with shipping that would be the Boom, then it was easy that was it so. once that friendship was built and right. the trust right then the back and forth was easier exactly it took a little bit when you're sending someone you don't even know a couple thousand to start off your business you didn't know how it was going to go but Absolutely. worked out good you know well sometimes you got to take that leap eh yeah that's what you got to do uh, I knew locally where I was at New England New York wherever I was thinking of going I couldn't get it out there uh, same country same products you go to Canada whole different variety of things that come in and they have like different customs laws so they allow more product in sometimes different product as well well, so. That's true. So I've I've watched one of these shows back in the day. I think it was Australia, like something Borders or something like that. Mm-hmm. And and it's funny how you notice the different things that can come into one country, but then another country has different agricultural or whatever the, the right. lo- laws are. Uh, like, for instance, Taiwan. It's hard to get chips by container, by pallet from there to America, but it's easy to get them right to Canada. Isn't but, that crazy? And what's crazy is then you can get them from Canada to America, no problem, right, right over the border. So, yeah, little laws like that, little loopholes, but learning like that. And uh, Brent kind of slowly introduced me to more people that was uh, that he found doing it or can get snacks up there. And we've traveled a little bit to find more clients and more people that will shop for us. So it's been pretty good. It's been Amazing. Good, so. So, when, so that was one leap of faith. Yeah. going into a completely different industry you were in the cannabis industry and here now you are going into the food which is eh, kind of hand in hand right it, right it played it played the bit. monkey's role right definitely. exactly but yeah yeah um 
Now I just took the leap of faith, start, and like I said, started in Rhode Island, did that for almost two years there, opened a second store where I was from in Massachusetts, Peabody Mass, and uh, yeah, slowly after that, I had two friends from down here, one I've known for about 20 years, we grew up together in Mass, and uh, he just called me one day and he poured it out, he said he was sick of working nine to five, and he seen me doing what I was doing with the snacks, and he wanted to get in business down here. So. Okay, so that's what started the yeah like the started move? the snowball you know okay. what i mean and then a couple times i go out to visit them and uh it's funny so this was one of the reasons why i started going to florida dunkaroos i don't know if you remember the nostalgia <laughs> yeah, candy yeah, yeah. all right so we're up in boston and only one store is getting them i go there i buy every single one i get 120 of them I posted on my IQ story for my Pawtucket store. The following morning, I sold out in like 30 minutes. All right, so I'm calling everyone I know. Boom, Granger goes, yo, I'm at Walmart. Uh, Florida, there's like fucking 400 of them. What should I do? Bought every single one. So that convinced me to come down here. And after I came down, he was like, showing me a couple different places and we ended up on Clematis Street late night like 1 a.m. and uh, I just couldn't believe how many people were still outside and partying and amongst themselves in crowds and I just felt like it would have been a perfect area for it. You just so, got that feeling inside. Yeah, I was like, damn, I'm in a foot traffic area and I do okay. Like my business, my doing it myself, great. I was doing okay. I get my customers, but here, I'm like, damn, the foot traffic's got to be at least ten times more than what I'm getting up north. It so, almost does it for itself. Yeah, and up north, you know, you you got the cold season stuff like that. I think I was down here in November, and everyone's yeah. just in uh, shorts and t-shirts. Exactly, so. beautiful yeah. weather. So, yeah, and uh, no sooner I come back a second time for more Dunkaroos. Actually, we've seen that a little office on uh, the 500 block of Clematis with for rent, and I. I didn't leave that place until someone talked to me so i got in touch with the landlord he thought i was a little crazy on what i was doing and trying to go on clematis made me send him some sales reports and things like that and he approved us for the spot man so amazing i yeah. love that nah thank you and thank so you. do you find that a lot has to do with the nostalgia behind what you carry uh yeah i try to make it like play into the nostalgia some of my logos had like real nostalgic value from it like the all that nickelodeon logo or i did like a men in black box things like that that would catch the eye too, like make you just feel like damn i remember this and i don't know i feel like it brought more joy to the product sometimes right. i'd get like the nostalgic product like the dunkaroo the crystal pepsi or the 3d dorito something you just remember from the 2000s do you a have big black mountain dew you know do you have i, I think it's called fun dip fun dip do you ever oh, see with those? the stick and yeah, the powder yeah. yeah i don't have it but <laughs> that would be something to carry for sure i always remember that as a kid or those long those long uh plastic uh things you cut the top and it's just colored sugar in it yep yeah that that's it. it that's it so the, the leap of faith that you took, I mean, you didn't have experience in owning a store per se, right? You were in the cannabis industry and then you right. were just sort of like, okay, I need to do something else. Yeah, I mean, so like cannabis industry my whole life doing that. I grew a lot of cannabis up in Massachusetts and uh, just had little niches I worked with there. And uh, long story short, I, I had a beautiful daughter in 2018 and I just felt like nothing lasts forever, right? So like nothing good always lasts forever, I try to say. So I took the run of my money, what I did in cannabis in say the 10 years and that leap of faith, like you said, damn, I think it's time to start something new. This is why I you know stumbled upon this called brand went to canada like this is this is almost outweighing what i'm doing in the cannabis right now so why not convert it 100 percent? you know and and i'm gonna take a, an assumption here that what you were doing in the cannabis industry at that time was not necessarily on the the legal side it was gray area we'll call it, gray it for gray sure area. Yeah. exactly i mean yeah we, exactly but recreational cannabis and mass you know free for all mm -hmm. and when i you know just a lot of growing a lot of sales and yeah yeah you know kind so, of, so that leap of faith almost kind of brought you into into a safer zone anyways now that you had a child correct you know correct little, little i had a little room. incident a little slip up when i was up in rhode island i got arrested with some weed on me and i just 
uh, my girl was home pregnant and little things like that just got to me. So yeah. I, I just promised myself I'd never fuck around getting in some trouble like that again. And again, the store it was just like a uh, yeah. bright light to me. So That's awesome. Yeah. We, yeah. We've had a lot of guys on the show here actually um, talking about different situations that they've been in uh, mm-hmm. jail and whatnot and getting caught with things uh, not as, as severe as it could have been you know and some of them you know had kids or what have you and and it's all kind of like it seems like the same thing it's almost as if uh, they were caught with with a, a certain amount or or given not such a bad time right you know what i mean or right. what's that well, i'm looking for the word here they were given not a, a huge sentence yeah and then that kind of woke them up and something else had happened where like yeah oh my god this is actually making more sense i should go down this path instead right. which you know thankfully nah, for that sure. happened. a good pivot yeah it, it bothers me when i hear about this sort of stuff though because my my country canada we're we're legal coast to coast recreation and medicinal right you know like um my brother tells me all the time like he'll be out and about you know just smoking a j and walk up to a cop and like oh yeah i'm trying to get to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and and it's no big deal anymore right you know which i love you it's know we, casual. We, yeah. we are roughly around the same age i'm assuming so we grew up in a time where marijuana was definitely like frowned upon and if you got caught with you in a dime bag you'd get in trouble from right. the security guard the teacher whatever and course, now it's it's so it's so mainstream right now yeah, you go it's, get your license for a hangnail go get your cannabis yeah. that's everything yeah. you know so it's crazy yeah so taking a leap of faith obviously is like really important for you and it's changed your life for for the better you have the one store do you still have the stores up, up north? i have one store still up north uh, in peabody massachusetts and just the one in west palm beach but we are looking to expand possibly into atlanta soon too atlanta, so, okay yeah yeah i think you have a wonderful uh idea for this area and you're obviously doing well because you've been here for how long now oh almost three years almost three years yeah flying by because we have a large population of, of what i do for them we're called yachties so mm-hmm. we have a large population of us here in west palm beach and uh most of us do extensive traveling with our jobs and then when we get time off we also go travel some more so any of those products that you have from foreign countries right um I, i'm sure most of these people probably come in there and grab it as well do you do you have things from south africa uh so i haven't found too much from south africa yet i've been digging for sure i'm actually going out to like it's not a south africa but costa rica area starting to look for more southern snacks as well too but um i'm gonna give you a hint right now uh, a, little, a little reconnaissance mission for you in lauderdale there's mm-hmm. a place called the international store okay it's on 17th street i suggest you go down there and just walk around and get some inventory ideas because it's the only there's like another place i think called pen dutch which might, might does like uh meats and whatnot okay but this international store has all these products and south africans are a very large population in the yachting industry i, I, I gotta say like they outnumber every other culture and they're always looking for their stuff and the only place right now is in lauderdale oh shit and they have all the products so i don't know how he gets it where he gets it some of the products are on the shelf in Publix, like mm-hmm. like uh royal boast tea and there's like this purple liquid that they put into their like seltzers or whatever okay. uh, and uh mrs ball's chutney that's a big one which is, is sold at Publix but yeah they have like a green uh, cream soda that they love but I mean if you got that up here at your store you know we, we have all the boats here in uh, Rybovich and you have all the boats down here at Palm Harbor and the uh, the Australian docks on Palm Island you you have hundreds right people, hundreds of people and honest to God people come in and I get a lot of that anything South African I'm yeah. like damn no and I always say oh they, they'll be like we have family from there like okay you know tie me in you know so somewhere we yeah. can get it from but I'm gonna check that out. Absolutely, I think that would sure. that would definitely up uh, up some sales for you for sure because oh, yeah. they're always out on the on the Clamata Street. And definitely, just seeing something different always brings and, it in too. And, so. and you have a great you have just such a great concept because like anytime anybody any human comes into a store and sees something from their childhood they freak out right they're like oh my god you have this i can't remember it's phenomenal you don't know how many people too just say oh i just came in for water i saw the coolers and i am my mind blown you know yeah i never seen half these products in my life so that's awesome yeah it's a good good feel have, have you uh, been introduced to a gentleman named uh dj nick flash no okay i'm gonna i'm gonna connect you guys through instagram because he has this love for vintage uh cereals and stuff okay Okay. And so I don't know where he gets his stuff because he's always putting it up on Instagram and whatnot, but mm-hmm. another uh-huh. person that might, you know, 
connect. Sure. That's, that's what we're about. That's how you and I met uh, through yeah. a mutual friend, Jesse Del Benny. Uh, shout out to Signed Icon. Thank you very much for the uh, the hookup here. This is awesome. Jesse, you're the man. So I want to get into a couple more topics now that we have a, a fair knowledge as to what you're doing. Yeah. And um, we have touched a little bit on the uh, on the leap of faith, um, going after something new and what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I would like to talk about is not letting your environment dictate your outcome which in a way you've already touched on a little bit because your environment before was a different industry which right. was would take which which was taking you down a certain road mm-hmm. and you allowed i'm assuming what was going on around you not to stop you from going out after something else because i have to imagine there might have been some backlash from saying hey I'm done. Yeah, and I wouldn't necessarily call it backlash, but they'd be like, you know, what are you, an idiot? Like, what are you going to go sell some sodas and think you can make a living? Or, and I don't think I, and I don't think they meant it, meant it in a negative way. But I also felt like they, they were t- trying to persuade me to just kind of stay where I was at, like you know, and oh, maybe something else will pop up, you know. So, what do you, what do you reckon the reason would have been for them doing that? Ah, man, I think, I think truthfully, like some thought they were looking out for me, you know, not like, hey, man, you just can't go uh maybe open this business and pay your bills just you know ease into it things like that and i definitely had some people just call me uh silly stupid whatever you want to call it and others that were like this would be a good concept you know i i've never seen anything like it before i'd definitely be stopping in you know so and those are the people you want to hold on to right. those are the people you should still be talking to the others well, they can go fuck off exactly exactly yeah. and and once you leave an environment the that isn't your calling anymore you know you don't get those calls no more phone slows down people stop hitting you up but you figure it out you know so that's a huge life lesson that we talk about here on the life choices podcast which is anybody that is saying no don't do it right you know and they're your close friends or they're people that have supported you for years genuine general generally People want you to do good. Mm-hmm. They just don't want you to do better than them. Of course, them. of course, and and I, I I feel that too. And I just felt like uh, it might have been something where I was a little more outside the box. And a lot of my friends set up there was wasn't like that. You know, it's kind of the same thing: the nine to five work, the girlfriend situation, the go home. Uh, I didn't want that every day. You know, I just wanted to do something different too. Obviously, from the cannabis industry, even to my, where I'm at now, I'm not working for a boss I'm not working for anyone but myself and that's where I feel like I strive the best as well too and I think that's common amongst most people that are that are doing their own thing is the fact that they're not responsible for having to uh, oh sir can I go do this or hey I did this the other day you're not you're not answering to anybody right right I just make the moves when I have to and you know do whatever I need to do yeah so and sometimes those moves are scary I'd have to imagine yeah, I mean, I've traveled. Uh, before I got into the snacks, my biggest flight was only going to California. So then when you're taking a trip to Thailand or Turkey and things like that, that was a little scary for me. Um, starting the business, my first month of sales after I took the sleep of faith, looking at that, like, that was scary. You know what I mean? So, But I just kept building a great Instagram following. Um, I did have some closer friends up in New England that helped promote me for me and just kind of keep bringing it bigger and bigger so and and the environment that you now have i have to imagine is i mean now you have something to support therefore people will support you yeah definitely and uh i feel like my mindset's just changed in what three years like i told you being down here just being around different people different minds things like that uh seeing seeing like i say outside the circle like i'm the new guy coming in i'm i'm the one that maybe people aren't looking at so i'm not talking as much more listening you know so I learned a lot being down here, and I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. You know, my my worried some isn't. Oh, I want those new sneakers now. I want to, you know, do that or do this. Like I want to make the next big move. You know, the next big pivot, whether it be a store. Maybe I want to do another Airbnb, uh, something like that. You know, but yeah, my mindset's completely changed down here, and I think my daughter's had a lot to do with that too. But just kind of staying focused and trying to stay on the bread and thinking about retirement early that's all so i like that you brought up all these points right now it's something i've been thinking about quite a lot and i've expressed to some of my closest friends is as i'm 
going down this path of something new, which is very scary. You know, I'm trying to create a community out of thin air. Right. But the more I do it, I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine doing anything else because it's so much fun for me. Right. Mentally and physically, it gives me joy. You know, financially, I know it'll it'll come there. Mm -hmm. But when you said like you're not too worried about the newest shoe, right? Right. I could care less more and more every day about the mansion about the fast car no you know? for sure like i am i'm there with you with that mindset and it's amazing how shifting the people you associate with and what you're going after how that changes things right and and what's around you kind of almost demands for you to stop worrying about the silly things yeah and, I, and like you said it just came so fast i remember moving here you know and then i'm just saying like oh we open april april 16th man what, what's gonna happen what's gonna happen to since that day's happened i've foot on the gas you know don't have anything to worry about except my family down here in the business so that's what i'm just trying to stay focused on and it's thriving and it's thriving man i, I couldn't be more happy we got a couple uh cons coming up throughout miami we're going to and things like that okay and uh try just like i said trying to expand keeping clematis busy too we got a few ideas uh bring in some big names cool names miami florida natives to try to boost up the block you nice. know um where i'm at on the 500 block of clematis it's it's so different man it kind of fits my niche so well whether it's the subculture the coffee shop uh the bars across the street kapow the asian infused restaurant there it's just like a different niche but i feel like everyone really really fits the community i have for the stacks and going in there whether whether you like heavy metal or you know you're traveling or you like k-pop whatever it is all different walks of life come into the store you know there's something for everyone there yeah yeah and like you know you go in there and you'd see like you say maybe someone that's like a yachty and then uh someone that's just like a big athlete or things like that just different walks of life and they get in there and they're like damn i tried these last time you got to try these like it just bringing people together it's an experience no one's ever had you know so i think what you've tapped into is so amazing because what it is is it's people's childhood right right yeah and it's it's so hard for a lot of people in my opinion to hold on to that childlike enthusiasm right, right. remember you, i feel like you remember what it was like you no, probably still have sure. some of it for right sure. so we grow up you know having so much fun as young teenagers or younger and at some time like we're told about responsibility and all of a sudden we shift everything and we start like paying bills and buying a house and you know cars and all of a sudden you forget like wait a second i had fun before right and and as soon as you walk into anything whether it's a, a music a, a song being played that takes you back to high school mm -hmm. or a candy right you're instantly in a good mood like no. you're bringing people joy no that's what i feel like too you walk in we got three tvs playing every time i'm working i put on one of the first two tvs i either got nickelodeon you know from the 90s something that i remembered cherished cartoon network third tv i play some old sports right so everyone comes in they might just see their old tv show on the camera uh on the tv enjoy that too like like you said you, people bring in joy and just like straight happiness when they come in eyeing something they've never seen haven't seen in years something different for them for sure that, that's awesome uh, yeah what what you're doing right now and, and the fact that like you know some people kind of like w had said to you like oh don't do that like you know how are you gonna like support a family and whatnot actually i came across this uh this quote that i want to hopefully i have it right down here well it's a quote from walt women that says uh never judge what you don't know Mm -hmm. and when i read that i was just like wow that, that sounds really interesting and i couldn't understand like it was just a couple of days ago I'm like wonder wonder why why that came across and then meeting you it's like like when when you got out of the car we, we both met each other for the first time right and i had this assumption uh, of what you were going to look like based on what our mutual friend jesse had told me like he's got the store it's all like you know imported goods and whatnot and and then like you know and then i see you and i'm like hey, this is completely not what i thought and then I think like, hey, like some of your friends must have judged you because they're like, well, but dude, like, why would you go and try to sell candy? It's not something that people are like, oh, I'm going to grow up and sell candy. Right. But that quote came across and then now the meeting, meeting you, I'm just like, it kind of fits. Yeah, so do you, do you feel that you got judged by other people? Uh, man, if I did, I didn't hear much about it, you know? So yeah. I definitely feel like everyone had a little something to say, like... Like I said, I'm not saying I was 
great at what I did before, but I was, and uh, I had a lot of great clients and people that I saw week to week, bigger names, and uh, like I said, yeah, like people judge me for like leaving something that I've built, and they felt like, oh, I don't know, just, oh, maybe he's giving up on it, maybe he just wants something new, I I don't know how, how to feel, you know, but uh, yeah. definitely... Definitely was judged, definitely had people had things to say, and uh, I feel like some of the people who had things to say later on caught coattail, you know, tried to do what I did as well, too, maybe open up their own store, whether it be a sneaker store, whether it be doing snacks and sodas as well, too, but uh, as many people who judged me, they also saw what I was doing, so they and kept that, eyes, you know. And that can be the biggest compliment. It's, you know, when people start dressing the way you do or try doing the same thing, in a different genre than what you're doing it's it's kind of flattering it's right like, okay well you you said this before well, now look at you but now, now you're trying it. exactly so. exactly you know same person that said they never spend seven dollars on a bag you're crazy how's that gonna work that's not longevity you're not gonna be able to do that you know it's the same person i'd love to show like my sales report to you know or just show like hey it does work or you know um, well, the best thing is is you don't even have to show those individuals because right. anybody that knows you that's connected to them they're gonna find out eventually oh, dude's got not just one but two stores right and not only that man i get so much love down here people be like hey that's good you're the guy who owns the snack store you do the sodas man thank you for bringing something so different down here and like damn i've, I've lived in new england 30 years i never got nothing like that you know so yeah, it's a great feeling yeah great feeling new people uh they appreciate it you know yeah. so it's it, cool. it does a it does a huge wonderful thing for someone's soul when you get that level of i'm going to call it respect mm -hmm. you know that people are just like respectful and, and grateful that you're there that what you're doing has actually uplifted their life somehow right yeah no better feeling when you know i get a guy walk in he's like man i've been following you since before west palm and then you showed up here how can i not support you know so like damn like people watch the whole story it grew and uh they just they came they support and your whole story is just on instagram yeah instagram a little bit of tiktok when i moved down here it was funny we had a girl come into my store and uh she did a tiktok and it blew up and i had people like go check your tiktok go do this i'm like i don't even got a damn tiktok what are you talking about <laughs> and uh the girl's video blew up man she was like a little south florida foodie chick and man, after that i made a tiktok and a couple days later i got ten thousand followers just off a boom. couple videos so boom you know that's right. amazing Amazing, man. I always had a huge growing on Instagram. Um, I don't know. I feel like I just hit the niche at the perfect time. And whenever I was posting things like that, people would see it. Uh, I had celebrities start DMing me like, hey, man, want to want to trade promotion for a snack box? And it's like, damn, never in my life. Like, how I swear I've sent you DMs before and now you're answering like pretty cool feeling like that's what makes me happy now. You know what I mean? Seeing someone like seeing my business and being like damn you got a cool concept i'd love to work with you or uh you know uh when are you bringing this to down here or you know that's that's my joy now like you said so your your, your cup runneth over that's it that's, that's it. amazing I, so. I just i love hearing this sort of stuff because i'm at the beginning stages of creating something right and, right. and i have blind faith in myself and I've, I've taken many leaps of faith throughout my life changing my my whole where i live what i do as a as a living and like i've just said fuck it so many times and like right gone left gone right and everything's brought me to where i am now where yet again i'm at the bottom you know i'm mm -hmm. at the beginning uh, i say this often i'm successfully failing daily right. you know right. and i love it. it it's a good feeling and when i hear stories like like yours where you you know you were down one path and you decide hey you know what i want to try something else because i just feel like it's time and you put in the work and right. that's what people don't usually understand they think like oh he just opened a store imported some food and there it was no nah traveling uh, network and taking risks like you said sending some random guy some money to just pray your snacks or get a tracking number you know just uh, leap of faith but it worked uh, going to New York after work so let's just say I had a great day at the store 
I end up meeting another vendor that's a little closer than Brent in Canada. So let's just say the closed store closed at eight. Me and my wife, before we had the daughter, or man, might have been pregnant, might have been had the daughter. We just take these rides to New York, nine o'clock at night, rip it, go fill the Jeep up, bring it back the next day, stock up the shelves, get it ready for the store again. If I had to do that two, three times a week, that's what it was. Uh, started getting to the point where, damn. Yeah, it's closer to go to New York, but it's a little more expensive. What would it be to rent a trailer in a Suburban and just go up to Canada? So we started doing that almost every two weeks. Uh, my girl, after a couple trips, she was just like, find someone else, you know? So <laughs> my buddy Billy came with me a few times, and, and just the best of times, man. Whether it's uh, buying everything out in Walmart or the little convenience stores or meeting some vendors, like just different just oh, different. i love it i love it because again uh you're in south florida snowbirds right canadians i'm canadian we're fucking down here all the time no you definitely know, we're allowed to live here for six months of the year <laughs> you know so how what, what smarter idea than go to canada get all the candies from up there and bring yeah. them on down yourself oh yeah it was crazy and you know uh man it just just kept going like i just kept buying snacks and people just kept buying them off me so yeah yeah, I kept going, man. It was an unbelievable feeling still to this day. I mean, so. you've been here for three years. The hard work was, was was put out. I mean, that's something that people just don't understand when they're starting something new is they have to... I'm a big believer in this because I've learned it the, the hard, easy way, I guess, is that you have to be looked at like you're crazy. Right. That's when you know you're on the right path. Nah, most definitely, man. Yeah. Most definitely. Any press is good press. And like you said, damn, I, I can tell you a hundred times where, like you said, oh, all right, do something fun for nostalgic, right? Just a story. There's one blockbuster left in the world, right, in Bend, Oregon. I sent them a box. They loved it, whatever. They sent me a little merch box back. So after around that promo for doing that uh, little video with them, I brought in about 30 of my old VHSs just for my mom's house. Put them all on display, didn't price any of them out. People just asked $5 a piece, $5 a piece. So people are like, why are you selling VHSs? How do you sell a VHS? No one's got VCRs no more. What are you doing? But people still bought them. And I shit you not, like, I, I screenshot in the phone. A few other stores start doing the little same thing I'm doing, you know? Like, that crazy man, right? But that crazy man you followed. So Exactly. That's cool. And, and that's the message I want people to know right now uh, with everything that we're doing is... As soon as you start being told you're crazy, mm -hmm. keep, keep going. going. Nah, definitely, hundred percent, definitely, man. And uh, the more I heard it, the like crazier I got. You know what I mean? Like, damn, you're not gonna be able to do that. Oh, oh, you're gonna be able to find something from there, and it drove me nuts. Cause hell yeah, I'm gonna fucking find something from there. I'm gonna make the trip to Canada just to say I told you so. You know, so fuel for the fire. Fuel for the fire. That was it. So I fucking love it, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been good, and I think the fuel of the fire was like. A a lot of people just and again not maybe hating this could just be like them really giving me their honest opinion but close-minded you know just like i said same routine type deal like i can take your advice all day if i wanted to be in your shoes because mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're doing it right but that's not what i want to do i want to be called crazy selling snacks or crazy moving to florida thinking it's gonna work or you know that's how i want to be looked at you know hey, so. there's a saying out there uh, opinions are like assholes right everyone has one right and i take i take people's opinions listen i i'm i'm all the time asking for people to like hey write in the comment down below how much you don't like this <laughs> right tell me what about it you don't like what do you think we're doing wrong because the, the information is needed mm -hmm. you know I, I want the opinions but at the end of the day I'm gonna, right i'm gonna do whatever the fuck i want exactly this, right. is, this is my it. deal right mm -hmm. and that's what's so great about it um i have spoken about this bar in spain in barcelona like to hundreds of people and uh they did the same idea which is the nostalgia point point of view it's called polaroid okay and i have the photos in my phone of of the the two street names that's the corner that you just go up the alley to go get it to go to this bar phenomenal bar like tiny little bar mm -hmm. bartenders were awesome uh really good scotch like just good alcohol but the atmosphere right was unbelievable they had uh he-man cartoon playing on a wall not, not even like on a pull down screen just on the wall he man and they had all these glass uh cases with all of the figurines from all the different gi yeah. joe he man like you name it everything from back then the 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 
favorite for me was uh, the walls had all of the old posters okay. from the movies. Damn. So before Blockbuster, right, you right. go to your local I don't know, was it a convenience store or your local video store? Right. And and you could ask if you could buy the poster. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. That's crazy. So I got to ask then, so since you've done, you didn't do much traveling before you got into this industry. Right. And now you're you're driving cars across country borders. You're flying to different countries to procure these foods, mm -hmm. which like you're saying, isn't always easy to get directly from A to B. Right. You got to go CDE to get it back over here. Any crazy, get pulled over, get questioned, get a oh, yeah. trunk full of shit. Yeah, so, all right, obviously we're going to Canada, me and Billy. Billy, what's up? We go to Canada, and uh, we're smokers, so we know we got this rental car. We know if we don't clean it before we bring it back, we're going to get hit with this rental fee. So we've been smoking the whole time. Um, I believe the first night or two, we stayed in Buffalo. We just got up to, like, the peak. We're like, all right, let's call it a night. So we really smoked out then. Going into Canada was the easiest thing in my life. I was so nervous. I'm like, damn, probably do smell like weed. We have no weed on us. It's left at the hotel. Like, what the hell is going to happen? And we get this sweet old lady with glasses. Like, you know, your typical five-foot nan. And she's like, hey, what are y'all doing today? And we're like, damn, we're just coming up. First time up. Just come to the shop and, and see what Canada's all about. And I just took my buddy's passport, my passport, gave us a look, and just told us to have a wonderful time. We got right into Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Billy are looking at each other like, damn, it's going to be the greatest day of our life. Like, let's let's go shopping around, too. And I shit you not, we went up to a Canadian dispensary, right? So we were going to smoke up in Canada. I didn't lie when he asked. But when we went up to the dispensary, we didn't find anything good that we liked. So, like, you know what? Like, I don't even want to waste my money at this point. I'd rather go somewhere else. So on the way home, after I've met Brent at the casino to take everything out of his truck to put into my truck and all the shopping I've done for this uh, thing, we get back to customs on the border. And uh, I did not get a good not, border Not the patrol. sweet old lady this nah, time, Not eh? the sweet old lady. I got this uh, stuck-up little asshole kid that, you know, could just tell like he wanted to be a cop to be a bully right and he he's like you guys smell like fucking weed how much weed are you smuggling da 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 he oh, straight up said that point blank point blank me and my buddy billy are like oh he's like did you smoke in canada or do you have any weed i'm like no we didn't smoke in canada we didn't like any of the weed that we saw and we you know we have no weed on us and then they're like well why do you guys smell like this i'm like listen we're from massachusetts we drove the buffalo stayed a few nights car smells like weed didn't believe where we were saying. Not at all. They pulled us out, put us in like a, not a holding cell, but a different part of this customs thing where it went from like cable TV to no TV. Like oh, we're just damn. in a room waiting, like, and we're both saying to each other, like, bro, in the weed at the hotel, like, what the fuck do we have to worry about? And we're nothing. Just, we're just so worried <laughs> that like over nothing. And they pulled every snack out of that car, every snack out of that trailer, like, like, I mean, I packed it like Tetris already, right? So they uh, took everything out. It's got to be like 30 degrees out. They come in, they're like, listen, we don't even have time to keep getting into this. Like, they're talking about they wanted to open the snacks, they wanted to do this. I, I guess some guy was try trying to cross the border with loaded firearms. Loaded firearms, snacks, and weed, right? So they're like, exactly weighing it out. They're like, listen, we're going to let you go, blah, say, blah. Let us go. But we had to repack all the snacks oh, in the freezing cold delayed our trip about three four hours so Damn. yeah no that was it but i shit you not i go back to canada a month later and a little asshole man knew who i was and he gave you me got a, him again got him again no. every time going to buffalo i feel like i got this dude and he was like oh it's the fucking snack guy again he's like <laughs> how much did you buy at walmart this time and i'm like damn i got the receipts but probably a couple grand gave me the guy uh, the the yeah yeah whatever and just gave and me the push yeah. yeah you know oh. so you made that relationship work too best now. times and worst times definitely yeah. man definitely um i don't even know crazier stories i've gone to thailand i've shopped all over thailand for snacks i fucking so, love thailand oh it's incredible yeah. bangkok kwa hin uh, phuket pattaya like we've gone all over so yeah. that was a crazy hunt in its own i don't think anything too scary crazy there but um people definitely looking at you like like what the fuck is this they call you farong right the farong, right guy yeah, yeah. so like they're, they're looking like that farong like and i have one thai guy there and they're like yo these ladies think you're about to eat all these chips brother 
like what the fuck's wrong with you you know so no one ever would get the concept that like now nah, i'm taking these back to america and selling yeah. them so uh long story short i'm not gonna name no names um i set myself up with a wonderful person out there who shops snacks for me and everything like that and we plan on keeping her around and making her travel some more so oh nice so she does all of the she goes across yeah, the all country the, all of the thailand right yeah, now yeah. she hasn't really barreled into other countries but uh we set up some other little paths my, my partner chris for the palm beach store as well he's half vietnamese so he has some family out there and he set up a link there so we want to send her back there we want to get her over the taiwan when things settle down and yeah just have her keep traveling you know that's awesome so, she probably loves it right oh yeah loves it and like uh again she just she's so thankful man like the amount of times she just says thank you i'm like yeah you know, if you say thank you again you know what i mean like <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stop you know but knowing what she like got paid hourly out there and knowing like how hard she works and really how intelligent she is like speaking both languages handling the phone calls for me with the thai people i don't understand it's just setting everything up like and and to still give her something with that like i know is fair but like she thinks is unbelievable is you're, you're, pro- you're giving her that little bit more like to you it's not that big of a deal but you're giving her more than she'd be getting in a job she didn't well, let's like say she works 50 hours a week she makes 60 bucks mm-hmm. oh no dude I mean? i've been three times i've dated two thai girls right um i had a girlfriend here for a little bit uh met her in rhode island mm-hmm. actually she's working at a thai restaurant Small world. Uh, we started dating we went to bangkok visit her family she was a graphic designer and would make 300 dollars a month graphic design as a graphic design. designer exactly right exactly like mind-boggling mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like for you or your company to, to spend what you're whatever it right. is you're spending on her let's just say we give her anywhere from a couple hundred a week depending <clears throat> on how much she shops to 150 and she's like she's working 10 hours 10 yeah. 12 hours you know and it, she just loves it too and they're they are so grateful in oh, that definitely. country which which i've expressed this to so many people that, that i'm friends with or, or people i work with on boats mm-hmm. because i travel so much uh there's a handful of places that i just think have the most amazing people thailand absolutely right right some of the most famous have you been to croatia no i haven't no i, I don't know what you would get there candy wise but it, in your travels if you have time the mm-hmm. croatian people are amazing awesome. they're right. just phenomenal human beings like i we'll go into a story some other time but they're just the nicest people ever cool. thailand um i'm actually planning another trip either february i might go by myself if my friends yeah. bail out on our columbia trip uh yeah. brian and tj don't were bail, supposed man. to already buy the tickets when i got back in october which we haven't so we'll see if we go to columbia in february if not don't wait tickets just keep going up man right? the longer you wait they were like 300 bucks like a month ago yeah. in Colombia. right anyhow if they don't go then i'm going to thailand for maybe two weeks but then Ooh. i have a buddy that has a birthday his 40th in may all right and then i'll be going to thailand for a month hell yeah i love that place i went out there a month at a time like you said yeah. too. unbelievable man just kind of hotel hopping seeing the culture and unbelievable cheap food cheap dining great living uh cannabis legal out there now so recently right yeah, within can, the past year yeah june last june yeah so you can go out there any shop like that which is so funny because every time i've gone out i haven't and i did all the other drugs when i was younger in my 20s like right we'll get into that another day but all, all i do occasionally is smoke weed because it's just like i like to go to sleep of and course it's just good it's my vibe definitely. yeah but when i'm on holiday absolutely i want to smoke a joint and sit on a beach right, right right and i couldn't do that and i was in bali for a month and i was in thailand for a month and i I was like, what the fuck yeah, am I going to exactly, do? Exactly, exactly. And now when I go back, I can go into a store and just buy a J and, and buy a J. You can smoke it there. You yeah. can probably do whatever you want. It's still not like it's publicly frowned on, so you're not right, walking right, in down your the hotel street. or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But most hotels, you know, like when we our first hotel guy gives us this big no, 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 you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Slipped him two hundred baht, changed Dog. everything. Yeah, yeah he walked away, didn't yeah. see a thing. So I love that. unbelievable, man. It so really. When is. you first went to Thailand, then being mm-hmm. that you're going for for snacks and whatnot, you walked into a Seven Eleven yeah and i was just fucking mind blown i was just like i was just like yo if i could just take this franchise to america with everything in it i'd crush everything you know uh can you imagine if you had sandwich makers behind the counter yeah it's it's it, i was mind blown
on about that too. And this the, one of my guides I was with, he just kept saying, "Oh, the best deal here is uh, the chicken and rice." Yeah, yeah, get get fucked. You telling me <laughs> microwavable chicken and rice? And I got it was unbelievable. Absolutely, got me about less than a dollar too, yeah, man. Yeah, so yeah, yeah Seven Eleven's ahead of their time out there. All types of different food makers, fresh food too. And, and, and the cashiers, they they cook all your food for you. Yeah, you just right away. go get it off the shelf, give it to them, and right there on the spot, whether it's a whether it's a cup of soup or a fucking hot sandwich. Right, don't anything. matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. They I heat it up it. for you. It's amazing, mm-hmm. man. It really was cool. And uh, there's a Seven Eleven on like every other block. Like, oh, dude, it's everywhere. I forget the math, like how many WalMarts there are in America. Let's just call it five hundred. Yeah, there's about fifteen thousand Seven Elevens in Thailand. In comparison, you, eh? You do the fucking math on yeah. that. They're everywhere. It's crazy. So, yeah. yeah, but just walking in there, seeing all the snacks, I'm like, I'm telling my buddies, like, oh, just get everything, and they're like, oh, how many suitcases do you think we're doing? Oh, this, that, that. Yeah, it didn't matter, man. We're we're rolling around buying everything we saw, you know. So, so, so this is even more of a question then, because I'm so curious about all this that you're doing. I'm fucking, I'm in love with what you're doing. Okay? Right. First off, brilliant idea. Okay? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, I, I can see the joy that it brings you because like you're lit up talking about it, which is nah, awesome. It's, it's the stories, man. Yeah. You know, what, like something that someone might not ever believe you know like yeah. you went to Thailand to hunt snacks you went to Thailand for this to smoke some weed see some weed like yeah man like I felt not, like, not the usual right, reason for right Thailand. and exactly right so like you said like I don't think I'd go to Thailand for a month with no weed like that I'd be like I'd be losing my mind I'd be homesick like I don't know but when when it all just was like oh it legalized I need more snacks I haven't been here it all just clicked, you know. So. Isn't it crazy how that works, though? Yeah, yeah. Like, like that's some deep shit I want to get into. Like the universe is some fucking cool shit, for real. It's like it all just, it just kept rolling in, kept easing in, and like, like you say, to go out to Thailand. Uh, tell you another crazy story. The girl we met for the snacks, right? She's working at a dispensary when we're out there, so we're smoking in the dispo. She's there, and. Just faith again, like you said, craziness. This uh, young boy's name's Michael. He's from Germany. He walks in, said, "Oh, they matched on Tinder. That's why he's here. Like he just came to buy Bud and Press or whatever." So we get to talking to him. Rolling Loud was in Pattaya. Uh, everyone was going to Pattaya for the weekend, you know. And hey, what are you doing this weekend? Like you're not from here. It's like, oh, I'm just coming down. I'm going to Pattaya actually. We're like, shit, you're not. How are you getting there? And he's like, we're gonna take the bus. And we're like, nah, bro, you're gonna drive in the van. With us and just like I said, partied with him, hung out with him, and again, who's shopping for snacks for me in Germany? Michael, you know. Boom. Why did I meet him at a dispo? How did that happen? Ten thousand miles across the world, like that. That was just meant to happen, man. Dude, I believe in that shit. Me too. Me too. right place right time like you just can't even explain it man no. it was just crazy so you gotta have faith yeah that was it and like even him too i could only imagine like i'm probably with six or seven guys and he's like he's just like damn like this is michael said the same thing it's like i didn't find good weed till i seen you guys i didn't <laughs> i i would have never believed in a snack store selling fantas i get from here and like it was cool man cool feel you know so he also hunts like i i collect some different types of cards too so he's i got him running all over germany just trying to stay busy you know oh go get me these disney cards go get me the pokemon cards that just dropped we can sell them at the store i sell them behind the scenes you know so just wheeling and dealing wheeling and dealing but like you said like damn i could have if i was there an hour later an hour before i don't meet him a day later you know a day before There's you know, so you many don't cross humans. these paths it's yeah. Yeah, a billion people in the world and we right. just linked and here we are still talking you know to this day it's cool man hey man listen the whole thing i'm doing here is like i'm you know going through my network of people right? right and and then the network of people that i have you know they'll be like oh how's it going and then they'll be like oh i i got this guy like i think i think it'd be good for the show and that's how we just met right. you know like there's eight billion people in the world we would never have met possibly Facts. and then you know our boy del benny just is like you know he mentioned it about a month ago yeah and like you said to me man like when i pulled up i wouldn't expect like i think i just like i did a huh when i seen you like <laughs> damn all right this is gonna be this isn't as what i thought you know so it was definitely a little more lax so that's, that's a huge hope compliment. you felt the same yeah too, absolutely man, so. yeah i mean i don't i don't typically get wound up anymore about i don't, I don't want to say anything but 
I lived such a life of being stressed when I was younger. And mm-hmm. when I say younger, I mean up until like less less than a decade ago, I guess. Right. And certain things happened that I just took way too fucking hard than I should have. Mm-hmm. And I just started living this life of gratitude and, and faith and, and just loving everybody and, and just honestly looking for the opportunities instead right. of waiting for an opportunity you gotta make them man. my eyes are wide open and it seems like every move that i make seems to be and i just whether i know it or not in the moment i know that it's being done for a reason mm-hmm. so that the outcome later on is going to be so fucking fantastic so i'm welcoming all these things so my nervousness is kind of like kind of gone away over time with any aspect of work or life or relationships friendships any of that stuff right it's very no. good yeah good i feel like good is in and i feel like this too i'm good but i'm out there you know what i mean like comfortable with anyone able to talk to anyone uh and like you said, just kind of over a decade of time, just changed, changed outlooks, changed things like that. I used to be always like, okay, I can fix this. I can solve this. I can do that. And like, even some things that would be out of my hands, I'd just always try to fix and fix. And I think that was something that was always a stress for me, like overthinking. When I've moved to Florida, I've learned to just, just like slow down a little bit. Like, foot's on the pedal for all the good things I have to do, but like things that are not out of my control, just wait on it. Just It'll come if it's meant to be. If not, just keep it moving. A hundred opportunities might kick you, you know? Yeah. Life's a motherfucking roller coaster. Right. You never know. You never yeah. know. And uh, like you said, I think there was one time uh, I probably missed an opportunity to go to Atlanta to meet a rapper. Mm. And after that, when I saw that rapper post a different snack company this is early on when i started too but it was just something so little that just flared me like okay never again like like you said this podcast it could have meant everything to you Mm. could have meant nothing to you but i'm like you know what he invited me i'm not gonna say no i'm gonna say yeah whatever it brings i'm gonna go do it you know so yeah so i mean it's brought joy to my fucking heart i mean you're a cool cat and i appreciate it conversation's awesome thank you you. thank you your, your story like jesse said it like he's got a cool ass story and you have cool ass stories yeah. you know and you're going to have so many more as you create other things and continue on this this path I, I gotta ask because I know like when I go to Thailand um, I take an empty bag yeah because I know I'm gonna go to the JJ market and just buy a Stash fuck ton of up. shit of you know course, of course. Um, everyone knows that I wear a sarong basically uh, around the house like my roommates my friends they all know like I'm <laughs> basically no shirt sarong I don't give a fuck and it's so comfy and they're dirt cheap over there right on Amazon here they're like 40, 50 bucks I'm like go fuck yourself I tried to get the elephant pants things like, dude I got them they weren't fitting Pete yeah. man you know yeah. <laughs> I'd be like woman you need to sew both of these together like you know but anything I couldn't like enjoy I got for my daughter and my girl yeah. so so when you go to a place like Thailand and you're and you're obviously you're bringing suitcases mm-hmm. to bring back as much product as possible because it's, oh, yeah. it's cheaper than having to like fly pallets of it or, of or, or DHL of course. or whatever it is way cheaper do they give you any hassle when you're um, back? honestly the two times i've done it i've never gotten a hassle you know okay. but uh i've heard i've heard stories like damn you're crazy brother just gonna take your suitcase or this that the third i think i brought home a couple fake bags and they're like oh if you do that they're just gonna confiscate everything you're gonna be flagged this that the third but yeah it's brought it's, it's working i brought two suitcases huge like i mean if i was the guy like moving it, i'd be like what the fuck is in that it's 60 70 pounds but kept it moving kept it moving um, nice. Yeah, pretty crazy, man. Pretty crazy. Awesome. Buddies each brought a couple suitcases. Anything we couldn't fit after that, we. I mean, it's not, you're not smuggling other. drugs, right? No, like you're just too. getting candy. Listen, man, if they pull me over TSA, like, what the fuck you got all this for? Like, do you not look at me, bro? <laughs> like, I'm fin to eat this. I'm not going to be able to go to Thailand for another two years. Like, yeah. Let me just Fucking enjoy myself. Expensive. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So, I mean, I had the funny story for him. Um, like after my stop in Canada like I told you that Mm. time like I just feel like no matter what they want to stick you on like you said it's just fucking food it's candy it's it's a fucking bag of Doritos like what are you gonna do man it's not it's not it's not even like insects or anything like that nothing at all prepackaged food normal candy shit it's flown around the world as it is anyway there's places in New York City that has all this product I got I got a boy here actually you might want to talk to do you have you met um, Jeffrey owns fortune cookie yeah, oh yeah, I've okay. talked to Jeffrey. He's a cool cat times. too. Yes, yeah, yeah. sir. He carried me for a couple of times.
times when I was down here. And okay. The more exploring I did, you know, I got to see We're, we're connected already oh, without definitely. even knowing it. That's it. That's and that's how I feel like Florida is too, man. Like even meeting Jesse, like I can't even remember like who brought him here, or did what, but like he like he's just down on the block, right? Yeah. He's a downtown yeah. cat, and obviously he's from New England too, which is cool. But just instantly clicked, man, and like yeah. from there, just I always he, supported his card movement yeah. too. And he, I mean, he's and into he's, that stuff with what he does with the sports and right. it makes sense that what you're doing it's it's on the same the same level it's just it's a different aspect from the same genre basically oh, right? definitely um i, I want to thank you tremendously um as always our our, our recordings go by so fast you uh, sit down i, you know, think, I couldn't fuck, believe it I couldn't how are we gonna have it. an hour worth of stuff to talk about and then it just like it starts flowing and right. it just goes you're you're an amazing human being nah, thank uh, you, your man. energy's phenomenal your smile's infectious i fucking Sick. love it um i actually want to meet like everyone at your store i'm gonna come by yeah definitely later come to, man to come do out. some little video we'll hook you up and excellent be dope man yeah. anytime you want to do a podcast there we can figure it out too oh yeah. absolutely yeah yeah i cool, love that you know? for sure we'll do some food stuff together exactly um exactly all of all of Peter's information is just down below here in the description. If you want to check out his uh, Instagram, TikTok, yeah. uh, if you want to go to the store, the address is down here for the one in Florida, as well as the address for, for the up one north. up north as well. Yeah. So you can contact him or just go into the stores and uh, purchase any of the uh, the fun nostalgic uh, candies and, and stuff that are in there. Thank yes, you so sir. much for coming by here thank today. You, I thank appreciate you. it. Make sure if you mention the podcast online, use the discount code Mountain Dew, or if you stop in store, mention the podcast and we'll hook you guys up as well too so there it is so to all you out there in the world of the life choices podcast all my lifers thank you once again for coming out every tuesday at two here if you have any questions or want to give us a comment down below uh you can always email email us if you want to be a guest on the show as well and as always we'll see you all here next week tuesday at two for the life choices podcast much love everybody thank you for having me guys much love Ladies and gentlemen, you are now a part of the journey. Life, 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 life choices podcast.